Are you considering a move to Melbourne, Florida? Melbourne, Florida is located on the east central coast of Florida, about an hour southeast of Orlando. With approximately 100,000 residents and approximately 700,000 residents in Brevard County, Melbourne was recently voted the number four place to retire in the United States. In this next video, I'm gonna go over my top five pros and my top five cons for living in Melbourne, Florida. If you're considering a move to Melbourne, Florida, you need to stay tuned. Let's do it. Welcome to the Living in Melbourne, Florida channel. My name is David Jelinek and I'm a real estate agent here in the Melbourne, Florida area, which is also known as the Space Coast. If you're new to this channel, please know that we make videos that are all about the Melbourne, Florida area and the Space Coast, Florida area, what it's like to live here, what it's like to play here, what it's like to work here. The food, the beaches, the entertainment, the outdoors, the real estate, and much, much more. I've lived in this area for over 35 years, so I know it very well and I wanna teach you about Melbourne, Florida. So if you're considering a move to the Melbourne, Florida area here and you wanna know more information, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, click that little bell, that way you'll be notified every time we drop a new video just like this about Melbourne, Florida. And hey, we're getting contacted every day from people all across the country. We're getting phone calls, emails, and texts from people who are considering a move to the Melbourne, Florida area, and we absolutely love it. So however you decide to contact us, just know that when it comes to making a move to the Melbourne, Florida area, whether it's in two years or two weeks, we have the experience and we have your back. Let's go. Now, before we get to my top five pros and my top five cons of living in Melbourne, Florida, let's actually look at where Melbourne, Florida is located. Here's Melbourne, Florida located on the east central coast of Florida about an hour southeast of Orlando and about two hours east of Tampa. The city limits of Melbourne are outlined there in red. And as you can see, most of the area of Melbourne is located west of the Indian River, which is also known as the Intracoastal Waterway. There are a couple small pieces of Melbourne city limits that are located on the barrier islands there and actually have a piece of the Atlantic Ocean there, specifically at the Howard E. Futch Memorial Park, which is also known as Paradise Beach Park. There are unincorporated areas of Melbourne, which have Melbourne addresses that are located to the north here, as far as up as Vieira, and also some unincorporated areas of Melbourne surrounding the city limits. Now let's get to the top five pros and top five cons of living in Melbourne, Florida. I'm gonna start with number five and work my way up to number one. The fifth best reason for living in Melbourne, Florida are the schools. The schools in Melbourne, Florida and in Brevard County are some of the best schools in the state, if not some of the best schools in the country. Melbourne has 23 public elementary, middle, and high schools. There are four public high schools in Melbourne, Florida, but those being West Shore, Vieira, Melbourne High, and O'Galley High School with West Shore, Vieira, and Melbourne High School being A-rated schools and O'Galley being a B-rated school. There's also a great selection of private and independent schools in Melbourne. And many of the schools throughout Melbourne have programs that are designed for the gifted and accelerated, as well as those that have special needs. Melbourne has several universities and colleges. The two most well-known are the Eastern State Florida College, which has a campus in Melbourne, as well as several other locations in Brevard County. It offers hundreds of two-year degrees and certificates, as well as some four-year degrees. The other university is the Florida Institute of Technology, also known as Florida Tech. It is a four-year university, which offers degrees in science, aeronautical engineering, and many other subjects. Now, the number fifth con or the fifth worst reason for living in Melbourne, Florida is the ocean. And there's effects that the ocean brings upon you when you live here. And the number one thing is the salt. The salt spray uh, can be pretty intense at times. It almost looks like fog at times. And of course, salt attacks metal objects and it'll attack your old car. It'll attack the metal housing on your air conditioning unit and anything else metal around uh, the property here. And of course, it's the more the more severe you are, the more closer to the ocean you are, the more severe it is. And then the second thing is something that's called red tide. And red tide is a natural occurring microscopic algae that uh, is in the ocean. But when there's too much concentration of it, uh, it will kill animals. It will uh, be a very big irritant to humans too. And I've experienced red tide two or three times in my lifetime here in my 30 or 40 years here that I've lived in Brevard County. And it uh, it is very uh, difficult to stand on the beach and have your eyes open. It's, uh, it's uh, very toxic. It uh, makes you cry. It's just, you just don't want to be there when that happens. And not only that, but it kills fish and then you have the stents of fish and it's just not a good situation. 
Okay, the number four reason for, pro reason for living in Melbourne, Florida, to me, is the economy. They say there's a thousand people moving to Florida every day, and many of them must be moving to Melbourne. The growth in Melbourne, Florida is tremendous. Right now, there's housing developments going up everywhere, such as in Vieira and surrounding areas of Melbourne. There's commercial areas going up. There's hotels, apartment complexes, businesses, restaurants. After COVID, of course, things were stifled a little bit when it came to development, when it came to commercial, when it came to businesses. But this area of Melbourne, Florida has really rejuvenated and is coming back very, very strong. It just came out from a, a Cato Institute study that said that Florida was the number one state in the nation when it came to fiscal responsibilities and freedom in the United States and in many, many other areas as well. Very much top of the top five for many business and fiscal reasons. Of course, there's no state tax in Florida and uh, property taxes are generally lower than the national average here in Melbourne, Florida and in Florida in general. When it comes to unemployment, we're below 3% right now. Uh, so there are jobs available uh, for those who are wanting the jobs and there are a significant amount of new businesses that are going up every day here in the area, new restaurants again. Uh, so the business opportunity here in Melbourne with the population increasing, there's land and room for development that is open. Uh, the opportunities are endless here in Melbourne, Florida. In Melbourne, Florida here, the median household income average is probably a little bit lower than the national average, but also but also is the cost of living. The cost of living index is about 90.8%, which is 10% below the national average. That compensates for maybe some of the salaries being a little bit lower than the national average, but it is above average in some industries. Of course, we have the Kennedy Space Center here in NASA. So a lot of the engineers and uh, scientific degrees and those uh, that are working at the Kennedy Space Center are uh, making above average salaries, of course. Uh, industry here. Uh, prominent industries are DSR Technologies, L3 Harris Technologies, Northrop Grumman, you have Rockwell Collins, SpaceX, Blue Origin, of course, they're all supporting the space industry there. And we have a very strong, of course, medical facility here with hospitals and doctor's offices. And the medical industry is very strong, of course, here with the retirement community and just everybody in general. And of course, business for business development and business uh, companies here are very prevalent uh, with a low tax structure. Uh, many of their corporations come here and have their corporate uh, locations and businesses here in the state of Florida. And there are several here in the Melbourne, Florida area as well. And now the number four con for living in Melbourne, Florida is the fact that, well, Melbourne is not the hip trendy, does not have the big downtown entertainment uh, nightlife that say somewhere like Miami, Orlando, even Tampa might have. Uh, it does have some nice uh, restaurants and some very nice bars you can get a brew and some uh, hors d'oeuvres and food. But uh, in, in the downtown historic Melbourne area and even down by the beach, there's a few areas and even around other parts of Melbourne and Brevard County, but not, not anywhere near you'd get down by South Beach or in Orlando where they have uh, place after place you can go and have a great nightlife and stay out till two or three in the morning. Melbourne, Florida doesn't have that. If that's really important to you, then you're going to have to go to, like I say, Orlando or down to uh, Miami, uh, down to South Beach for the weekend. Okay, the number three pro item on my list for living in Melbourne, Florida is that Melbourne is not a large town. It is a medium sized town. It's more of a sleepier town. It is not the large town that Daytona Beach is or that Orlando is or that Fort Lauderdale or Miami is. Melbourne is more of an in-between stop when it comes to tourists. Yes, we get our share of tourists, but it's not the big party town. There are not big entertainment areas in the downtown beach areas or in the Melbourne areas. There are some, there are some uh, very nice entertainment areas where you can party down and, and have some craft beers and and, uh, and enjoy yourself at uh, in the wee hours of the morning, but there's not a lot. It's not like going to downtown, like I say, Orlando, Miami, going down to South Beach, that sort of thing. Despite the fact that, uh, as I previously mentioned, there's a lot of development going on and an increasing uh, uh, population in Melbourne. Melbourne is very spread out and the surrounding areas are very spread out. So you don't have uh, residential areas right on top of commercial areas and in most uh, situations you do have have shopping and everything that you're going to need. Grocery within probably 10, 5, 10 minutes, almost anywhere you would live. And uh, you do have, uh, again, an increasing population, but it doesn't feel like a metropolitan area that Miami or Orlando is. Now, for those who have lived here for 20, 30 years, yes, I hear complaints all the time how it's growing and growing and growing, and that is true. And that's not going to stop. But Melbourne is more of a medium sized town. And that's what I love about Melbourne, Florida. You got downtown areas. We have some 
such great restaurants downtown that I love. You got Ember and Oak, you've got Backwater, you got Mega Malley's, you've got The Dove, just places that we, my, myself and my wife just love to go to, including my favorite lunchtime favorite is mustards. And yes, I got my uh, Chicago dog and garlic fries in on this video, one of my favorite things there for those who know me. So again, Melbourne, Florida is a medium sized town, not a huge population. Again, there's only about 115 or so if you include the unincorporated areas. And that's again, what I love about Melbourne, Florida. Okay, my number three con for living in Melbourne, Florida are the bugs, critters, and potentially dangerous animals. Let's start with the bugs. The mosquitoes in Florida can be legendary. In fact, some people call the mosquito the Florida state bird. Well, that's not true, but there's times when mosquitoes can be very, very bad especially during dusk and dawn. Uh, we have a garden inside our house and we try to avoid those times, especially when it's humid, when it's been a lot of rain, standing water, they can really come get you. We have a beautiful backyard area with a fire pit. And again, during the evening hours when we like to be there, it can be sometimes really hard because the mosquitoes will come out and get you right there at sundown. But that's why we have screening. That's why we have screen around our pool. But the mosquitoes can be very, very annoying at times and they uh, can bite hard. Most municipalities do have a spray service in the summer uh, to control mosquitoes. Okay, so there are other critters such as geckos, roaches, fire ants, wasps, uh, and something called love bugs. What are love bugs? Love bugs are, again, a nuisance bug that come around twice a year. Uh, they mate in May and September here in Florida, and they're most known for getting themselves killed on the front of your car, creating a mess on the front of your car. So you've got to get them off the front of your car quickly because they will damage your paint. There are many tricks to getting them off the front of your car besides, of course, going to a car wash. Google that one. But uh, love bugs are a big nuisance. They especially seem to like white paint for some reason. But again, they tend to be more in the rural areas, but you'll find them everywhere and uh, they are a nuisance. Okay, so let's talk about some other things such as poisonous snakes. So I think there are 44 different uh, species of snakes in Florida, and uh, they say there are six that are poisonous, and most of them are things such as rattlesnakes, you got cottonmouths, uh, you've got copperheads, uh, water moccasins, things like that, that are poisonous, of course, in Florida. You also have spiders, potentially deadly spiders, and those would be the recluses and the black widows type of uh, uh, species. They are here in Florida, and again, and those are prevalent. There are many, many, many good snakes around. They control the rodent population, which there is rodents uh, here in Florida, of course, as well. Uh, so, uh, but there are many um, uh, uh, spiders that are also not harmful. I I'm not a spider and snake guy, uh, so I try to let them go if I can. But uh, again, there are some that can definitely harm you. Knowing which ones are good and which ones are bad are definitely better for the environment. Okay, a couple more things to consider when it comes to potentially dangerous animals and uh, probably Florida's most recognizable item is the alligator. So alligators, of course, are most known to be in more rural, unpopulated areas, but I have seen them in residential areas. In fact, we live on a lake ourselves in a residential area, and we have seen two small alligators in that lake over the 22 years we have lived here. Uh, when you do see a small gator in a lake or a big gator for that matter, you just have to call Florida Wildlife. They'll come out and trap the alligator and send it to a location that'll be safe for that alligator. As residential areas are growing and developing, we're seeing less and less alligators being residential areas, but it still is a possibility. As for the other potentially dangerous animal that is in Florida, and that's a shark. You know, this is 2022 and we've had quite a few sightings of sharks and shark bites around the world it's seemingly here this year none that I've noticed or have heard about in the Melbourne area but it certainly is possible we have beautiful 72 miles of beaches here in Brevard County and a lot of swimming areas a lot of great swimming locations around the beach areas here and of course the sharks are out there so you have to be careful of that uh, no matter if you're in deep water or in shallow water you just always have to be wary about things in the ocean and there are other things in the ocean too such as jellyfish stingrays some other things out there that you just always have to be aware of your surroundings Okay, number two on my pro list of things to do in Melbourne, Florida, and this is my favorite, and it's all of the things that you can do in Melbourne, Florida. All the outdoor activities, all the fun places you can go in and around Melbourne, Florida. 
And that starts with the 72 miles of beautiful beaches that surround Melbourne, Florida in Brevard County. We love to go down and drive around in the oceanfront parks like Paradise Beach and Pelican Park to go for a walk, land the beach, get some sun, surf, swim, fish, boogie board, play sand volleyball, and much, much more. Many of the parks have restroom facilities and outdoor showers. Some of them are even pet friendly like Canola Beach Park where there is a special dog park area for your special friend. There are 150 parks in the metro Melbourne area and there's so many things to do in them. Golf, tennis, pickleball, baseball, softball, football even, surfing of course, boating, jet skiing, swimming, hiking, and many more. Wigan Park is the largest park in Melbourne, Florida. It has almost 400 acres of recreational facilities where you can do so much. It, can, it contains diverse facilities and amenities including campgrounds, a disc golf course, equestrian facilities, an archery range, an off-leash dog park, some biking and jogging roadways, nature trails, exercise trails, ball fields, an event pavilion, picnic pavilions, playgrounds, sand volleyball courts, and swimming lakes. It also has an 18,000 square foot recreational building where you can do sporting events and cultural activities. There are numerous walking trails and parks like the Vieira Wetlands and the Erna Nixon Park where you can leisurely stroll through some native Florida landscape and see some of nature's most beautiful creatures. Melbourne is fortunate to have the Brevard Zoo. There you can feed the animals, ride the train, and cool off in the paws on water play area for kids. They have lush, open air habitats that are home to over 900 animals from around the world. There's giraffe feeding, animal encounters, bird feeding. They have lions, cheetahs, rhinos, black bears, and more. They also have a couple other special activities like tree track zip lining and kayak tours throughout the Brevard Zoo area. In addition to all these activities, nearby to Melbourne within 30 minutes is the Kennedy Space Center where there is one of the best tourist activities in my opinion in the world. And then of course you have at Port Canaveral, you have the cruise industry where there are numerous cruise ships that go and sail throughout the region. And in addition to all the things to do in the Melbourne area, you're within one hour of all the wonderful water parks Park, Disney attractions, etc., that are located in, in Orlando, Florida. There's so much to do in Melbourne and in Central Florida. Okay, now we're up to number two on the list of my cons for living in Melbourne, Florida, and that is crime. So Melbourne, Florida rates very high in almost every subject, whether it's the cost of living, real estate, job markets, uh, the economy, almost everything, things to do, uh, outdoor activities, retirement, it rates very high on almost all those topics. The one thing that's a little bit weak on per ratings like niche.com and play, bestplaces.com is crime. So Melbourne, Florida, when it comes to Brevard County, is rates as one of the higher areas for crime. Overall, Brevard County itself is below average when it comes to crime, but Melbourne tends to tick a little bit higher. Uh, Melbourne does rate a little bit lower in the crime index than some places such as Orlando and the bigger cities. But it's worth noting that uh, when it comes to the statistics, Melbourne does tick up a little bit higher. It is still considered one of the best retirement areas by many uh, industries and many publications. But just wanted to mention that crime does tick a little bit higher when it comes to Melbourne, Florida. I've lived in this area for about 40 years and I've never been a victim of crime, fortunately, and I hope I never will. But it is worth mentioning the statistics about Melbourne, Florida. Okay, before we get to the number one pro and the number one con for living in Melbourne, Florida, won't you consider hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be able to see all the new videos that I put out about Melbourne, Florida, and there'll be some topics that you haven't seen before. Now, the number one pro and the number one con for living in Melbourne, Florida for me is the weather. Now, I, as I've previously stated, I have a meteorology degree. I came to Florida back in the early 80s, fresh out of college as a weather officer here, weather officer here at Patrick Air Force Base. So I'm very knowledgeable about the weather, but again, you don't have to be a weather expert to know that Florida is the vacation capital of the world and the weather is great. However, in the summer, it gets hot and it gets humid. The average summer days are in the low 90s, about 91 is the average, with the lows being in the mid 70s. Now the winters, if you call them the winters uh, for a couple months, they are great. They're in the mid 70s as the average high and the lows getting them into the mid 50s. But again, you've got to love that because I've worked with people for the last 40 years being here in real estate 
And uh, again, most people love the weather. You can survive the hot weather. You can survive the humidity by going indoors. There's air conditioning, you can go to the beach, you can go to swimming. You can uh, have a lot of refreshing activities that you can cool off with. But there's a lot of people also that don't care for that. I've had people move here that from the northern climates and they just don't like the heat, which is probably here eight to 10 months out of the year. They don't like the humidity, which is here probably again, eight to 10 months out of the year. And if that's a problem for you, then Melbourne, Florida may not be the place for you. And there are a couple of negatives that I'll mention. There are no change of seasons, really. Now I'm from the Chicagoland area where you, of course, you get uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring. And here you get summer, 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 and you know maybe a little fall and maybe a small amount of winter. So you don't get more than a few days per year on average where the temperature drops below freezing. Uh, we haven't seen any snow here in a long, 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 long time. So if uh, the change of seasons is important to you, you're just gonna have to go up north and visit some of the the northern climates or go to Europe or somewhere to see where it actually gets cooler. It just doesn't get uh, much below freezing very often down here in Melbourne, Florida. The other negative thing, of course, when it comes to weather is there are hurricanes here. And uh, we've been brushed by a half a dozen or so hurricanes here the last 10 years. Fortunately, we've never had a direct hit here in Melbourne, Florida. We've had damage in some areas around uh, Melbourne, Florida, but nothing catastrophic. So you will have that potential threat of hurricanes every summer as they're flying around the Atlantic Ocean and into the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, fortunately, again, we've never been hit here for hurricanes, but it does worry some, it doesn't worry me. We have our ready protection, we have our panels to put up on our home, we have our evacuation plans. So every area has something. We have hurricanes, some areas have earthquakes, some areas are prevalent tornadoes and things like that. But again, if you are afraid of the hurricane threat, like I know some people are, then again, Melbourne, Florida may not be the place for you. But all in all, when it comes to the weather, I think the positives outweigh the negatives when it comes to weather. All in all, I think the positives outweigh the negatives when it comes to everything living in Melbourne, Florida. I lived here for over 40 years. I plan to live here for more years. And if you come and visit Melbourne, Florida, I think you'll find the same. Thanks again for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one.